Chapter Fifteen of the Outdoor Girls of Deepdale. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Little T. The Outdoor Girls of Deepdale, by Laura Lee Hope. Chapter Fifteen. It's a bear. What can we do? It was Grace who asked the question. It was Betty, the little captain, who answered it. We must stop the train, she said. We must wave something red at it. Red always means danger. Molly's tie, exclaimed Amy. Molly was wearing a bright vermilion scarf knotted about the collar of her blouse. It isn't big enough, decided Betty. But we must do something. That man said the train would come along soon. It's an express. A slow train might not go off the track, as the brake is only a small one. But the express. She paused suggestively, apprehensively. There's a man! cried Grace. A track walker! cried Betty. Oh, he'll know what to do. And she dotted toward a man just appearing around the curve, a man with a sledge and long-handled winch over his shoulder. Hey, hey! Betty called. Come here. There's a broken rail. The man broke into a run. What's that? He called. Got your foot caught in a rail? It's a fog. A switch that you mean. Take off your shoe. No, we're not caught. Cried Betty in shrill accent. The rail was broken. The track walker was near enough now to hear her correctly, and fortunately he understood, which might have been expected of him, considering his line of work. It's a bad break, he affirmed as he looked at it. Sometimes the heat of the sun will warp a rail and pull out the very spikes by the roots, ladies. That's what happened here. Then a train, twas the local from Dunkirk, came along and split the whale. Tis a wonder Jimmy Flanagan didn't see it. This is his bit of track. But his wife is sick, and I said I'd come down to meet him with a bite to eat, seeing as how she can't put up his dinner. Tis lucky you saw it in time, ladies. What about the train? asked Betty. Oh, I'll stop that all right. I'll flag it. And Jimmy and me'll put in a new rail. You'll be noticing that we have em here and there along the line. And he showed them where a little distance down the track there was a number placed in wax made of post, so that they might not rust. From his pocket the track walker pulled a red flag. It seemed that he carried it there for just such emergencies. He tied it to his pick handle and struck the ladder in the track some distance away from the broken whale. The engineer will see that, he said. And stop. Now I'll go get Jimmy, and we'll put in a new whale. You young ladies, why, the railroad company will be very thankful to you. If you was to stop here now, and the passengers of the train were told of what you found, why, they might even pick up a purse for you. They did that to Mike Malone once, when he fragged a century fire when it was going to slip over a broken bridge. I'll tell him how it was and how you— No, no, we can't stay, exclaimed Betty. If you will look after the broken whale, we'll go on. We must get to Broxton. Oh, sure, it'll not take the likes of you long to be doing that, complimented the man, with a trace of brogue in his voice. You look equal to doing twice as much. Well, we don't want to be caught in the rain, spoke Molly. Ah, it'll be nothing more than a sun shower. It will make your complexions better. Not that you need it, though, he hastened to add. Good luck to you, and many thanks for telling me about this broken whale. Tis poor Jimmy who'd be blamed for not seeing it, and him with a sick wife. Good-bye to you. The girls, satisfied that the train would be flagged in time, 
soon left the track the last glimpse they had of the workman being as he hurried off to summon his partner to replace the broken rail that he did so was proved a little later for when the girls were walking along the road that ran parallel to the railroad line some distance further on the express dashed by at a speed which seemed to indicate that the engineer was making up for lost time several days later the girls read in a local paper of how the train had been stopped while two track walkers fitted a perfect rail in place of the broken one and something of themselves was told for the track walker they had met had talked of the young ladies he had met and there was much printed speculation about them i'm glad we didn't give our names said grace our folks might have been worried if they had read of it but we might have gotten a reward said molly never mind we have the five hundred dollars exclaimed grace it may already be claimed spoke betty when they had seen the express go safely by thankful that they had had a small share in preventing a possible loss of life the girls continued on their way they stopped for lunch in a little grove of trees brewing tea and partaking of the cake bread and meat amy's cousin had provided amy had torn her skirt on a bob wire fence and the wind was showed up beside the road the clouds seemed to be gathering more thickly and with rather anxious looks at the sky the members of the camping and tramping club hastened on girls we're going to get wet exclaimed molly as they passed a cross road pausing to look at the signboard and it's five miles further on to braxton said amy can we ever make it i think so if we hurry said betty a little rain won't hurt us these suits are made to stand a drenching then let's walk fast proposed grace she wouldn't have said that with those other shoes we mocked amy dryly got any candy demanded molly i'm hungry without a word grace produced a bag of chocolates it was surprising how she seemed to keep supplied with them the girls were hurling along now and then looking apprehensively at the fast gathering and black clouds when as they turned a bend in the road amy who was walking beside grace cried out oh it's a bear it's a bear what's that a new song demanded molly laughing no look look screamed amy and she pointed to a huge hairy creature lumbering down the middle of the highway end of chapter 15 recording by little t